Hi and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vanilla FM and we're going to start our third season in the Premier Division. It is 2033 and we've already played a few matches, just uh, friendlies mainly, but also two of the um, league matches and the first round of the Carabao Cup. So we went off to, I think, Austria for our um, uh, tour. And I've been I've been doing more friends than usually. I've I figured out. I think I mentioned this in the previous episode that if you take your team on training camps, I did a warm weather training camp at the end of the season, and that worked out really well. And they seem to come back with extra fire. It might, it, I mean, it does sort of cool down that effect after a while, but they do come back with some extra oomph. Uh, that's a technical term, but by the way, um, and the. So I did the same this year, so I I scheduled a bunch of friendlies, both in Austria and then also at home. Also went away to visit one of our affiliate clubs. And uh, they seem to have come back good, in good form, with three straight wins. I think Man United is going to be tough, so I'm not expecting a win there. Maybe a draw, who knows. Um, But anyway, let me take you through the team as it is, what happened in the summer, and also any other details. Let me just quickly touch on... The facilities we didn't really get to see this in detail so we we have moved into bristol city's um stadium for a um for a fee while we work on a stadium expansion that brings our stadium up to nine nine thousand nine hundred twelve seats so which is still not great but is better than you know it, it is at the moment so it'll allow us some extra income every year um, I briefly mentioned I haven't been able to ask for youth, youth facilities upgrades. Um, not sure what's going on there. Let me actually try that now. No, not there. Ooh, I might as well ask for these. Doesn't doesn't hurt, I don't think. I don't think I'll get them, but um, yeah. Transfer wise, I'll take you through the whole transfers. But we we did well in managing the transfer budget. Well, I might have to rejig this. For some reason, it's blocked, so I can't. But yeah, um, I'm bringing in one extra player. Uh, I did this same strategy last year. So last year, uh, where is he? Da, da, da. Yossip, uh wanted a friend basically to settle to settle into uh, the UK with. So I went and got, where is he? Uh, last year's. Uh, Karl Fumic, or Karl Fumic. Um, and he just lived in the end of 2021. So last year, he didn't play any matches for us, but he played a bunch of matches for the end of 21s. Uh, there we go. 16 matches, one goal. I don't even know what position he is. He's a central defender. There we go. So he just stayed down there. Um, the, the main thing I do is I just find a player that has good physical attributes. So he was the, like the best available from Croatia uh, when I looked last year. This year I did the same for uh, ta, 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 Hiroki Harada. So he's a Japanese player that we got last year. He came to me and said that he wasn't settling well into the UK. And I said, well, would a friend help? And um, he said, yeah, sure, let's, let's try and do it. So I'm hoping that this player will work. So he's a 21-year-old um, Japanese player with really, really good um, physicals. It's not like incredible in any other way, but he'll be all right and he'll play in the end of 21s and he'll just stay there and be a friend to our first team player, which is okay. So that's one of the ways you can help your players to settle. Uh, if you do that. So so that is an extra transfer to come in hopefully soon. I know I'm, I'm spending 1.4 million but I'm hoping I can then sell him back uh, to Japan at the end of this experiment so we'll see. Um, what else? So da, da, da. Uh, information. Oh yeah I don't know if I talked about the affiliates. We have some a few extra affiliates. Last year we've got um, Australia so a link with an Australian club this year in the summer, or just before the summer actually. Was it just before the summer? Yeah, I think just after the last match of the league, we um, 
made um, a deal with this uh, club in China. So that has a bunch of commercial benefits for us and also um, it means we have extra knowledge as well from that, that um, country. If we look at vision and supporters, it also bringing, brings in extra social media followers as well, which helps with our general popularity. So, so it's good to have these clubs, these connections, that, that number goes up a lot once you start having these links with other clubs. So that's another advice that I give to you. If you have the chance to ask for um, affiliate clubs, um, go f if you have the option, go for the one where it says, you know, to build up the club stature. Um, in other in other places of the world. So go with that option and then you'll get a list of um, foreign countries and that's a good way to, to build those relationships with those countries. Um, Finance-wise, we're doing brilliantly. We had some really good... Obviously, the prize money really helped. Where is it? Um, prize money, we ended up having 17.3 million for finishing the league um, in 12th, I think. And uh, this year, we sold a bunch of players as well. Uh, I'll take you through that in a minute. Uh, sponsorship went up by about 7 million. And um, yeah, season tickets as well increased. We've already... Wow, look at that. We've already made 1.2 million. Yeah, last season, the whole season, we made 4 million. So basically... We made roughly a, f a fourth of the <laughs> of the whole gate receipts we made last year, and we've only played two games. Uh, well, three games if you count the cup and all the, I guess, the friendlies as well. But yeah, so we made a lot of money already, and we, the season is just started. Um, da, da, da. Right, so let's get into the squad then. Um, we have one new goalkeeper replacing Usmain. So Usmain. We tried to offer him a contract and he didn't accept it. And instead, he went out to if we go back to this year. Uh, oh, it was at the end. Yeah, it counts as last year, t technically, I guess. Um, so he went out to this club in, in Lille for 15 million. That was his release clause. So he didn't accept the contract and he took that meant that. You were just taken by the release clause by that club. So that's that's okay. Uh, we also, if I go to transfers, free transfers? No. Yes. No. There was one player that got poached. Youth. No. Uh, was it this year? No. Oh, man. I don't know how to find it now, but I'll, hopefully I'll find it. It's not on here for some reason. It's not released, is it? No. Anyway, we've got a lot of money for that player. Um, I'll, I'll try to find it. I don't know how I can find. Oh, is that it? Is this it? Joe Jones potentially? No, that's different. Yeah, I can't find it now. I'll find it in. There's another way I can find it through the clauses. Uh, so yeah, so we lost uh, Usmain. We also lost Kamal, which I kind of predicted. I even tried to offer him a contract and you saw that he rejected it. So he went to Barcelona for 27 million. So we made a lot of money from that. We also so sold Otavio to um, a Saudi club um, because he was declining a bit. But I think he's, yeah, we still like his strength. Strength is waning. He's 31. So that's why I decided to sell him. That was on purpose. I just couldn't remember why I sold him. It was because he was declining his strength. Okay. Um, right, so we have a new goalkeeper. The new goalkeeper, Diego Zupel, is a young um, Chilean goalkeeper who's meant to be better than who's main in the long term. And I think he is. If you look at his goalkeeping, it's really good. Physical is good. He's still developing his mental abilities. And um, in fact, what should we... So when I look at individual training, I, I just go to... The position I play them in, and look at the lowest green attribute. So that's the essential attributes, or key attributes. And I think in this case, I'm gonna go for reflexes because that's a 13. So I go here and I go to reactions because I know that improves reflexes, and that's it. 
he's already trading a trait, so I'm not going to add any traits or anything like that. The other goalkeeper we still have is Neil Nolan. He's basically a backup. He's happy to be a fringe player, so um, no no problems there. Uh, he only played one match last year, and he was per he was perfectly happy with that. Seems like a lot of money for a backup keeper, but you you do need a backup keeper in case your keeper gets injured. So so I'm not I'm not ashamed of, of spending that much money on it. Uh, just to show you here that this new gen came from Colo Colo in Chile. So. In the right side of the fence, we still have Luis Mayo, who's been with us for a while. He's starting to age a bit, so he probably will retire soon, but we'll keep him for now. And we loan in uh, Nikola Trilovic from Serbia, 18-year-old, lots of potential. Obviously, he's only a loanee, but he'll develop well in our club from Partizan. Uh, on the left side of the fence, uh, because we lost Kamal and because uh, Cristiano Reyes uh, was not very good. Or Cristiano Reyes, I think his name was. We got two new players. The first one, uh, Jesus Angulu, a Mexican, a very experienced um, left back. Came back from Saudi to us. And he had a pretty good career, apparently. So, he's one of them. And then the other left side defender is someone who... Probably we wouldn't be in the Premiership Club, but um, I thought he would be alright for us. Matthew Anderson. He's had a... He's been in Austria on loan. Actually, one of the clubs that we played, I think. Played a bit in England. In a couple of clubs, but mainly just Scottish clubs. Central Defence was where I made the most improvements. So, I sold Otavio. Um, and for that position, for the wide position, we still have Zahari. So we kept Zahari, who joined us a few seasons ago. And we, for the wide posi position, we kind of just got a backup, really. So his name is Ben Cabang Cabango. He's a Welsh player. Played for Hull, played for Swansea. So he's the first time in the Premiership, really. Uh, maybe in Swansea he played a bit, I don't know. But um, yeah, so that's basically the backup player. On the central defender side, which is this side, we got two brand new players. So we have Joaquin Souza, a Hunga um, Hungarian player. He's getting on a bit, but he's still very good. Uh, he came from Watford on loan. Um, yeah, so he's a really good player, still. And then a player that is not quite matured, I don't think, yet. Well, he has, 31. Ah, uh, it's because he looks young in the picture. I mistook him for a young player. Um, yeah, so he's also, he's he's made his whole career in Derby. And um, now he's moved to Hereford for a little stint in the Premiership. So I've improved these positions, but they still need more improvement. It's just what I could do with the popularity that we have. Um, so... There we go. And then in the um, non nonsense centre-back, we still have the same two. So we still have Linda Mingi. He's, on, he's only 23. He's still going to develop a bit. Um, and he, we, we had him for free, which is amazing. And we have the Japanese player that I already mentioned, Hiroki, who's only 25 as well. So he will develop too. Uh, hopefully he can settle uh, as well. That's the important thing. Two brand new players in defensive midfield. One of our players, so one of, uh, so Fede retired and uh, the other defensive midfielder wanted to be a coach as well. And I was like, no, I'm not having any of that. So I w got two slightly younger players. They're still pretty old, 33, Pierre, Pierre Cummins, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's, he's a, he was a pretty good player in his day for, at um, a AZ and um, yeah, playing in the Dutch league his whole life. I mean, to retire in the UK, why not? And then as a backup, I got Senna Lin Linen, Belgian player, also old-ish, um, and came basically from the Bundesliga, look, according to this. Uh, yeah, he played in the Netherlands a bit, he played in Belgium a bit, but, okay. So that's, the, those are the two players there. And that position, I think, It'll take a while before we can get some young players for that because it's a position that typically requires a bit more experience as well because you're kind of blocking that, blocking 
that defense and also like feeding the ball up the, up the pitch. So it requires a bit more experience, which is why they tend to be older players. But I will endeavor to find a younger player for that position if I can. Midfield, we still have the same two. Marcel Caput, uh, a Polish player. Not much room for development according to his profile, but we'll see. And then we have one of our star players, Josip Zugaj. And he's got plenty, plenty to give to the club. He's um, quite extraordinary, really, if, uh, if you ask me. So, uh, really good for the club. Uh, I, so I'm surprised we managed to keep him because he's got a, he's actually got a um, release clause. It's 47 million, so it's a lot, but um, yeah, hopefully, if we sell him, it hopefully will be for that much for that much money because he's he's really good. Right side of attack, there's a couple changes. We have Dlami back to that position. He's getting on a bit. He's been with us since Skybet Two um, for gosh, lots of years now. Um, so he needs to be replaced soon. But for now, I went and got Stan v Vivers, Vivers, Wevers. I don't know. Another Dutch player, so we have a couple of Dutch players to get on, and um, yeah, he seems pretty good. He seems like he will develop well into a really good player for us. Left side, we still have Riley as a backup. He also has been with us for ages, and we went and got on loan uh, Jaden Philogene, uh, who's a really good player. He's getting on a bit now, but yeah, he's been Aston in Aston Villa. Stoke and Cardiff on loan, uh, and then a small stint at Hull, back to Aston Villa for some more money, uh, then to Watford, and then recent, more recently to Wolves. So that's where he is now, but he's on loan with us. And then our new striker, Joel Pirouet. He's our backup striker, but I wanted to get someone with experience. Again, another Dutch, there seems to be a trend here. So he played at Ajax before, also at Leeds and Swansea in the UK, so you'll have some experience of the UK football. But we still have our star uh, currently resting, um, Emra Tezgel, he'll be our main striker. Um, there we go. So we have a lot of Dutch players, let me see what else can I find from... Uh, Welsh, Hungarian, two Scottish players three Dutch players. I only have five English players, two from Chile, but he's leaving. So this is Christian Reyes, the, the, the defender that is leaving. Who when is he leaving? First of January. Oh, okay. So he can go down to the under 21s. There we go. Okay. Talking about the under 21s, how many players do I have here now? Uh, Ferdinand is on loan. If I do, I'm going to clear this to this why is it not doing it come on there we go 26 players oh, is anyone here by mistake oh god why is he doing that there we go 26 players still so if i take one two this guy out. We have 23. We have one player too many. So somewhere. And I'm going to get another player to uh, be a friend to a Japanese player. So these two really need to go. Maybe even these three. So I'll see if I can sell them on. Uh, I think I've already tried. Yeah, I've already tried that one. Let's try this one as well. I've already done that. Let's list him for a loan. Uh... Yeah, okay. See if we can loan him out and this guy as well. Uh, okay, let's do that. Okay, um, so I'll take you through the transfers. Dynamics are a bit poor because we made so many changes, but we've got our two new defensive midfielders, our two new captains. They are quite experienced, so I thought that was a good idea. Uh, staff wise, I'm still going through the staff, especially. Um, I haven't finalized if I go to contract and do this. I haven't finalized the youth coaches, so I need to go through that in detail. And is anyone missing from these groups? Oh, the former analyst is missing there, so I need to plug that gap. Everything else looks fine. I don't really use that many 
coaches in the under 18s because, you know, they get all the other coaches to coach them. So don't really need that that much. But yeah, we have one of the best staff from the league, which is good. Um, I can't think of anything else interesting to tell you. So let's jump into the match and then maybe we can talk there too. Um, so, as far as um, the projects for the future, so I, I still want to keep an eye on that youth facility. I want to upgrade it to the maximum if I can. So maybe I just need to wait for my reputation to be better. Maybe they won't let me do it for now, but uh, as soon as I can, I will. And uh, consistency of the t squad. Obviously, we made a lot of changes this year, so the squad is a bit new. There's a new player in every position, except uh, non-nonsense centre backs and defence. Uh, sorry, in the central midfield, all the other positions have had at least one new player. Some positions have had two new players. Uh, for example, left side of defence has got two new players. As uh, the center um, defender, sorry, central def central defender role, and the defensive midfield as well. So lots of new personalities to get on with each other. Lots of different nationalities as well, which makes makes the squad a bit more broken up in terms of social groups and stuff. So I uh, need to kind of just, if I can, just to try and keep the players that I have if I think they're good enough for the following seasons. But I'm hoping this season will be a good season. I'm hoping that if I keep the momentum I was having before, obviously this match is going to be a complete outlier because we're playing United and United is tough. But if we keep the momentum from before, I think we can make the playoffs. Um, or, sorry, not the playoffs. What, um, I mean the European slots. So I think I can make a European uh campaign next year of some sort even if it's like in a really really low co competition that that's okay uh, i want to try and get as far as i can in the carabao cup as well fa cup um see if i can get a european place from there which will make our life easier in the league as well um yeah so really the goal for next year is to be in a european competition of some some sort and then you know, the year after that is going to be crazy because we're going to be in Europe, so you're going to be super busy, um, and it's going to be quite fun to be able to play with that. I haven't, I've not played with that dynamic yet in in Football Manager. So, European competitions, international competitions of a club level, I've not done them, so it'll be nice to to do them. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Keep developing youth players, and. Um, try and build as much cash as I, as I can. We're doing really well for cash. We are now a rich club. And um, I don't know, as long as I don't do anything tragic <laughs> with the transfer budget and stuff like that, I think we will be all right. Okay, let's do a few changes here. Aaron, the game's really slow for some reason, so my mouse is so there we go you made it really slow the mouse is responding very slowly okay there we go all the subs i think that i need and yeah i think i'm happy with that okay let's go for it And yeah, so I'll I'll come back and update you um, halfway through the year, like I normally do, just to see how we're going, and that'll give us an indication of whether or not we'll be in Europe next year. So, so stay tuned for that. I don't think much is going to happen in this match, so I'm hoping to lose it. So I'll I'll leave it there, and um, I'll let you um, come back and see uh, in the January episode, um, which hopefully will be out next week. So keep an eye out for that. Take care. Bye-bye.